Okay, so I've um here's the the base repo, the Docker Compose app, which we've gone over before, and there are now uh, two branches. So one is called Simplified. So you can either you know go here, or you can also just check it out locally. But here's the Simplified branch. So this is um so let me just remind everyone. So the way that this works, the the Docker Compose app is we have basically these scripts and we're using Docker Compose. So here I am on the, the master branch right here. And these Compose scripts will basically have two services. So, so these are two containers. So you have your uh, Django REST framework container, which also includes the SQLite database. And then you have this Nginx container, which has all of your static React files and also acts as a proxy to your uh, your API. So all requests are going to come in to this Nginx server. And then depending on depending on what the request is, which is determined by this uh, configuration file that we add, if it's um, if it's slash API or whatever you want to call this, it will kind of route the request to the Gunicorn uh, application server, which is going to handle your Django REST framework application. And if it's if it's not there, if it's just uh, anything else, basically, it will serve up the uh, static React files. So one benefit of this setup is that you don't have to worry about the, the core's errors, right? Because everything is, uh, all requests are going to the same place, the same uh, URL. When you're developing locally, that's localhost. When it's deployed, it'll be whatever the IP of your EC2 instance is. But it's not only the same, um, it's not only the same IP address, it's also the same port. So cores errors that so you I'm sure have encountered this. Um, but if you're running, let's say locally, you're doing your dev server in React on localhost port 3000, and then you're also running um uh, your Django dev server on port 8000, then you have cores errors. Even though they're both on localhost, they're on different ports. Um, so you have you have to deal with cores errors, which is not a big deal. Um, and there's you know that um, module that you can install Django cores headers that will uh, take care of that for you. But uh, nonetheless, that's that's kind of a minor issue. So this setup avoids that. Um, the one major, let's say, weakness or lack of flexibility with this is that your database, which is included in this container, is just a file in the container. So anytime you restart it, everything disappears. So if you want to have anything stateful, it's only going to survive through the lifetime of, of, of the instance of the container that you're running. So if you upgrade the version, that's going to wipe everything. If you, you know, kill it and restart it, it's going to wipe everything. So sometimes that's what you want, sometimes it's not. And then um, also these other branches. So there's a simplified branch, which I kind of just did as a, you know, doing it for the sake of doing it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend, it, but um, this way, uh, this one, let me check out. Um, Um, so this one actually doesn't even use Docker Compose. It's just everything is in one giant Docker file. So we have one Docker file, everything's running in one container um, and there's one, so you just spin up the container and you destroy it. Um, so if you know, you're interested in that, uh, feel free. It's like, it's, you know, it's simpler in some sense. The Docker file is definitely more complicated uh, and it's, you know, it's less flexible and also has the same issue as the um, the main uh, default Docker Compose application, which is that the SQLite database um, is not really persistent. It's it's attached to the lifetime of the, of the container that you're running. All right, so I'm going to check out, uh, get check out master again. Um, and uh, what I did 
recently is I added this uh, Postgres version. So you can also check out this branch. Uh, I haven't updated the, the README yet, so I apologize. I'll, I'll take care of that today. Um, but so git checkout with Postgres. So here, uh, what I've done is the Docker compose file is a little longer now because it has this, also this. So uh, what we've done is we've kind of decoupled the database from from our uh, from our Django API application, and we've added this, which we're calling DB, which is an arbitrary name. Remember, so. The structure of a, a Docker Compose file, you have to have this version number. Um, uh, I think the current is like 3.9 or something, but I think three should just work fine. Um, and then services, you have to have services, and then you have to have at least one service. So this is required, this is required, and then you have to have one of these, but this name is, this name is, is arbitrary. It would be nice if, um, you know, YAML, the YAML files could tell you exactly what the structure is. Like this isn't, this is a keyword and this is just a variable name that you make up, but that's not obvious from, from looking at the file. Um, and then everything else is the same. It's gonna, so th this is the local development build. So it's just gonna be based on whatever local files you have. And then the same thing with a prod, it's gonna be based on an image that you push. Okay, so here, this is all basically the same. And we can take a look at the Docker file in a second, but what we've done is we've added this. So here, you don't have a separate Docker file for this because we don't have to do very much. Um, so we're just gonna pull the image. So we're gonna pull Postgres 15. This is you know somewhat arbitrary choice, but Postgres 15. And we've got some environment variables, which I'm just hard coding um, for the sake of simplicity right now. And then what's what's new here is this volumes. So um, has anyone heard of Docker volumes before? I'm not expecting. Okay, so uh, a, a Docker volume. So one of the say features of Docker is that everything is disposable. So that's kind of the idea. Just like when you create a virtual environment with a you know Python project, the whole point is that you can you know create a new one and then dispose of it, and basically nothing else on your computer is affected. So it's really easy to to experiment with things and then just get rid of the environment. And once you get it working, then it's good, and then other people can more easily reproduce um, reproduce what what you have working, um, and then. Containers, that's basically just taking that to the next level. And so one of the one of the drawbacks of that, as I've already mentioned, is that it's totally disposable. So you spin up a container and then you destroy it and everything's gone. It's like it never existed. But sometimes you want stuff to persist, even if you destroy the container. So a very typical example is a database. So if I have an application Right, so my I have like a a web application, and the the web application is stateless, so it doesn't it doesn't need to keep anything, right? It just handles the request and then uh, processes the request and sends a response. Maybe interacts with the database, but it doesn't like once that request is done, it, its job is done. So, web applications are typically stateless, but when they, they interact with databases and we don't want a database to be stateless. <clears throat> so we want that to persist. And a volume is basically just a mapping. It's it's a it's an abstract layer. So you don't need to really know the details, but all it is is a mapping um, from the host machine to the container. And the host machine means your laptop when you're running locally. So a volume is just like, uh, we're going to put some data, uh, Docker is gonna manage all of this, but we're gonna put some data somewhere 
in your local file file system. And we're gonna create a connection between your local file system and this directory on the on the container. So here, this represents somewhere in the container. And this particular uh, path is determined by Postgres itself. So this is where, this is the path that Postgres uses to actually store your data. So slash bar slash lib slash Postgres SQL slash data. Um, so that's just something you have to know from looking at documentation or just looking it up. But here's where Postgres puts, stores all of its database, like the actual information. And then this, uh, this is just a name we're giving it. We don't have to worry about it. There's a couple ways to do volumes. One, you could path, pass it an explicit path somewhere on your local host machine, but um, we're not going to do that. We're just going to let Docker manage everything. And all we have to do is give it a name. And that way we can use this name later to refer to that. But all of volume is, is a connection between your local file system and a container. So if I create this container, if I spin up this container and I save some data to the database, it's actually going to be saved on my local host computer. So on my laptop. And then if I destroy the container, the container gets destroyed, but the volume doesn't get destroyed. That information is still on my local machine. So if I spin up a new container, as it's spinning up, it's going to say, oh, I need to create a connection between wherever this is. So this is just a variable name. Docker knows, Docker can actually map this name that we give it to a physical location on our computer. And then we, we, we create a connection between our local machine here and the container. So that's all a volume is really. It's just a way of keeping data um, outside of the container itself on the local file machine and then giving the container access to that uh, to that spot. Are there any questions about that? Okay, so I'll um, run through, I'll just kind of walk through, um, walk through how you how you do stuff now. But one other thing you have to um, have to do is this is just like a Docker compose rule. If you define a volume somewhere here, like, you know, any container can have volumes and a container could have multiple volumes and containers can share volumes. Um, so it's, it's very flexible, but you just have to define them separately here. So volumes, Postgres data. It looks a little strange because we're not like supplying a like a value. It looks like it's a you know uh, a key value pair, but it's just the the key. So any volumes that you want to use up here in any of your uh, services or containers, you just have to list them down here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and look. So uh, because we're doing it this way, the this Docker file is going to be slightly different. So here's the, the API. Um, and uh, it may not be obvious just looking at it, but we're actually, uh, we're not going to run migrations here. So all we're doing is we're going to install the requirements and copy over our, our application. And then the command is to run this Gunicorn uh, application server. There's a slight hitch here or a slight complication. Um, so Docker Compose, you know, you, you define all the containers that you want to use, all the services that you want to use. And it will spin all these up and it kind of manages everything. It puts them all on the same network and allows them to communicate and blah, blah, blah. So it does, you know, a lot of stuff that we don't really need to worry about. Um, there's also some additional specifications like here, this is new, uh, depends on. 
So the API container depends on the database. So if something happens and this container you know fails or doesn't work, then you basically are trying to control the, the order of operations. So we wanna make sure that this container is up before we spin up this one. Um, so that's, you know, that's fine. There's a, a slight issue with this um, in that, you know, the container itself being up doesn't necessarily mean that the Postgres process is ready to handle requests. Um, so to account for that in the, uh, in the script here, I've added a couple lines. So the, the basic action is you do Docker compose up and we're in this case, we're telling it use the dev file. We have two Docker compose files, so we need to specify that. Um, and then I'm running this in daemon mode now, which means run in, in the background. <laughs> so I, I added that, that's a little different. And then what I'm doing here, so th this is the kind of poor man's, poor man's version of this. I'm just gonna sleep, I'm just gonna wait 10 seconds. So as everything is spinning up, once everything is built, I'm basically just gonna wait, uh, I'm gonna wait 10 seconds to run another command. So 10 seconds is somewhat arbitrary. I, ideally you'd wanna do something more sophisticated where you're like pulling the Postgres container and making sure that it's ready, but um, that's more complicated than we need. This will work fine. Um, five seconds, I'm sure it would be fine as well, but just to be uh, safe. So I, I'm gonna wait for 10 seconds after after Compose has done its thing and everything's up and running. Um, I'm gonna wait 10 seconds and then I'm gonna run the migrations. And how you do that is there's this Docker exec. So exec allows you, it's just a basic Docker command. It allows you to run a command inside of a container. So if I'm, you know, on my local machine and I have, I don't think I have any containers running. Yeah, I don't have any containers running, but if I did have one running, um, I could refer to it by name, Docker exec container name. I'll talk about this in a second. And then whatever command that I want to run in the container. So what I'm doing with these lines is after my uh, Docker compose file runs, I should have three containers up. I should have my Django, my Django service, the Nginx service, and the database service. They should all be up and running. Then after 10 seconds, I'm gonna let the Postgres container do its setup and make sure everything's running. And then I wanna execute uh, the migrations. So Docker exec, Docker exec allows you to run a, a, a command directly and then it'll stop. So, so from here, if I just wanna run a one-off command, um, Docker exec, Docker exec is what you do. So this container name um, is the default that Docker, it's the default name that Docker Compose will give to my API container. And just, so API is the Django service. Um, and the, the name that Docker Compose will give it by default you can specify this, but I'm just using the, the default name. Um, so this is based on whatever whatever the uh, root directory is. So in that case, Docker Compose app, but if you have a different directory, then this part will be different. So this is whatever the root, the root directory name is. And then this is the name of the service, in our case, API. And then one is just basically the, the it's it's based on the the number of instances of the container that you're running. So in this case, we're only running one uh, instance of each container. So all of these are going to be one. But you could, for example, if um, you know your server has lots and lots of traffic, you can have two uh, instances of the nginx container running. So we're not going to worry about scaling or anything like that. But uh, that's that's where this this name comes from. It's derived from 
the root, the uh, the service name, and then the number of containers basically. So one, two, three, if you have three containers, then it would be API app one, API app two, et cetera. Any questions about that? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run the uh, development script here. Um, so I have I have this saved, but so this is gonna be cached, but um, so dot slash run compose dev. I don't need to pass it any um, arguments. So this is gonna spin up everything and I'm running it in the background. So we're not gonna see the usual output there. So I think everything is up and running and it's probably waiting 10 seconds now. Okay, and then it is running the migrations. In this case, uh, there are no changes detected. So I recently ran this um, and uh, the volume is saved actually. So I ran it. So that's that's the reason why we're not seeing all these migrations being performed because you know, my the actual data in my database is persisting across uh, container runs. So I'll, I'll, we can get rid of that and start fresh, but I'll, I'll just show you that this is actually running now. So one thing we can do is Docker PS. We can see that uh, the API, the Postgres container, and then the, the Nginx container are all running. Um, and you can also do, for example, if you want to get the logs. So you, you can do the individual Docker container. You can also do the Docker compose has like a parallel set of commands. So this, um, this PS won't apply. So like, if you do Docker PS and you have lots of different containers running, it'll show everything. If you pass it Docker compose, and then in this case, the Docker compose file, and then PS, it will give you only the containers associated with this Docker compose file. Um, so you can run that. You can also check the logs. So logs. So if you're missing all that output, you can, um, you can check that there. So now what I'm going to do is this should be running on a uh, local host. So there's the application running. And I'll just open up the dev tools so we can see any errors, but uh, list winds. So I had one saved from a previous run. So it, it persisted, but we'll, we'll see it. We'll see that explicitly in a second. So I'm going to create a wine. I'll call this whatever, doesn't matter. And you can see that the application is working and saving to the database and all that good stuff. All right, so let's say now I want to, uh, I want to, to update my application. So what I'm going to do is I want to stop. I want to stop all these containers. So Docker Compose up runs everything. Docker Compose down will tear everything down. So um, before I tear everything down, I want to show you that there's also a volume. So Docker, let's do. I did Docker log, Docker PS, and then volume. Let's see, will this work? Maybe there's not a volume. Okay, that's fine. I'll just use the regular Docker volume. Um, so here is the the volume that got created with this Docker Compose file. So we have a, a volume. So just like we have containers, we also have volumes. So if you want to delete the volume or destroy the volume, uh, you can do that. Okay, so um, 
let's see. Oh yeah, so let's uh, let's spin down our application. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna copy this, but instead of up, I'm gonna replace this with down. And one of the nice things about Docker Compose is it will tear down all the containers. It will tear down the network and um, optionally it will tear down the volume. So I'm just gonna tear it down just the containers, not, I'm, I'm gonna leave the volume up. So I wanna keep the data in my volume. Uh, sorry, down. Just take a second, and now everything's um, everything's down. So it took down the network, which you don't really need to worry about. Um, we're not doing anything complicated with networks right now, um, but Docker Compose will create uh, a network for all of your containers to run on so that they can talk to each other. And then it destroys these containers. And if I do Docker PS, nothing is running. Now, let's just say I'm, I'm not going to actually make a change, but let's say I make a change and then I spin up, uh, I want to run things again. So I'm going to use the script, run compose dev. It's going to spin up all of my services up again. It's going to wait 10 seconds and it's going to run migrations. Nothing should be different. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my application. I'm, I'll do a hard reset, so Shift, Command, R. If I go to list wines, this is still there. So even though I destroyed the container and spun up a new one, uh, my, my data has persisted. So I can create a new wine. And that um, also works. So now I want to show you is let's just say so uh, with the original version of the application using Postgres or sorry using SQLite inside of the container every time you just every time you take down the container like all this data would be gone. Sometimes you actually do want to destroy uh, this data and start fresh. So you can do that as well. So instead of Docker compose down, well in addition to that you pass it an extra flag dash V, which basically means take down everything that you would have taken down before, but also take down the volume. So we'll see the output of that. And notice that before we just had these three containers and the volume now or sorry, the, the the three containers and the network, now we have this volume that's that's being destroyed. So now like that just says like, so we just basically wiped out our database, which sometimes you want to do. Now, if we spin this up again, we run this again, it's gonna have to recreate this container, which means that when it runs the uh, migrations here, it's gonna have a, clean database so the migrations will actually run. And we'll see that. So I'm gonna run Docker Compose Dev. It's gonna wait 10 seconds. And you can see that it actually ran all of these migrations this time because it started from a fresh database. And if we go now, I'll do a hard reset, uh, shift command R, all that stuff's gone. So I can create another wine, you know, one. And all this. Uh, so if I want to start fresh, I can do that. If I want to keep what I have, I can do that. So if you use volumes, uh, you have control. That's basically a, a switch you can flip. Any questions about that? I'm sure there will be a lot of questions whenever I actually start to implement this, but right sure. now I yeah. can't think of any. Yeah. 
again, so this is the same way. So, you know, you definitely do not, uh, it is definitely not a requirement um, to use to use the, the Postgres container version. Um, it, it's 100% up to you. If you want to do it, then great. And uh, if you have run into issues, I'm happy to help. Um, and if you don't, then that's fine. So this is kind of like a, you know, like a little extra bonus for, for those who, who who want it. Um, and then the production deploy is just identical. It, it's the same thing. Basically the same thing as the other one. You'll have to build and push the images just like before, create a new version number. And then in prod, you'll you know create your EC2 instance, you SSH in, you set everything up. Um, and then you'll just run this. So it's it's basically the same exact thing. This also has the dash D flags that will run in the background so that you know it can easily run these commands. And if, if you do want to see um, all that stuff. Again, you can just do the logs. So let me. So if you want to see, here's the database logs. Let me see if we can see the request. But anyway, so uh, if you do need to debug, you can do it at the like. You can get all the recent logs for the entire. Uh, you know, higher compose application, or you can also target specific containers. All right. So I'm, I'm not going to walk through the deployment because we've seen that uh, a bunch of times and it's the same as the, basically the same as the dev. Okay, it means that you have to, it will create, if you have dev in the, the prod, it means you have to Postgres database in your computer, right? Yes. So if you run, you know, since I've, uh, I've run this, I actually have that, that Postgres database. It, it exists on my computer. There would be a, a way to find it, but uh, if you use a variable name like this, you're basically letting uh, Docker manage it. So if you really do, I can't imagine a case where you would, but if you really you really want to, to manage it at, at a lower level, like pick, pick exactly where on your computer you want this to, to be, you can do that. Um, otherwise, if you give it a name, you're basically saying like, I don't really care where you put it. Uh, I just want an easy way to reference it. But uh, yeah, so if you run this, you will have a, a Postgres database running um, well, not not running. You'll you'll have the data for the Postgres database on your actual local machine. It it won't affect like your actual Postgres version that you have on your computer. Uh, this won't affect that. Did that? I, I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah. Thank you. And then try for example, we so like if we put it in AWS, right? Yeah. Um, so, if if my computer is down, then my like we really couldn't use that link, right? So, uh, if you when you run when you run the Stalker Compose prod file, uh, it will you know if the if this volume doesn't exist, it will create it, um, and then it will stay. It it will persist as long as your EC two can. As long as your EC2 instance is running, if you terminate the instance, then yeah, everything it, it would just it would be like you know throwing your computer in the trash can basically. Um, so it, if you create a new EC2 instance, then all of that data will be will be gone. But as long as you keep the same EC2 instance, um, this this data will persist even if you update the the container. Okay, thank you. Good. All right, if there are no more questions, I'll stop recording. <laughs>